Hey, uh, YouTube. <clears throat> Wanted to talk about the process of um, registering my boat and trailer. And uh, I'll just sort of tell you the story and give you a rundown of how it worked out for me. Because um, there was a lot of confusion. At least there was a lot of a lot to learn in this process and just hopefully this can give you some tips going forward um, <clears throat> I, I don't know how other states work but so this is for uh, New Jersey um, basically if you have a boat and it's over 12 feet you have to have a title on it no matter if it's a um, a canoe so um, <clears throat> My neighbor down the street, he had um, a nice, it's a 14-foot uh, aluminum boat runabout with a steering wheel, kind of center console off to the side. Um, it's a uh, Misty Harbor with a 25-horsepower Johnson, uh, 1999. So, I mean, it just looked like the perfect boat for me. Um, we live near the water here. Uh, in uh, Point Pleasant, so we, um, you know, he gave us a deal, I guess, I don't know, I thought it was a deal, but when you sort of look at all this work, at the end of the day, you really need to kind of factor in the time, and uh, maybe I should ask for less, but, um, uh, yeah, I got the boat for like 1500 with the trailer, the trailer was new, but maybe I should have said, yo, I'll offer you a thousand bucks, you know, and he probably would have taken it. He probably would have hemmed and hawed for a month or two, but anyone who's smart knows that um, this is a potentially, you know, you're going to be left with something that you can't legally register. So um, uh, it's good to um, just know how the process, how in-depth the process is. And I actually got lucky on both the boat and the trailer that I didn't have to uh, go through as many steps as um, I may have had to. So let's let's do the first thing here. So um, if you if you go on the DMV site, um, you can look at this page, and basically um, you're looking for lost, stolen, or damaged documents. So um, if you have uh, nothing, you need to call uh, the um, you, you need to call the DMV, and uh, it's called the Special Title Unit. And um, basically, uh, you can find it online, but I kind of it was tough for me to find it. So, um, but it's interesting if you just call them. They email you this this PDF, which is a ton of pages, right? But basically, there's this like this step by step process, and what you basically do is collect all of the information, and then you would submit it all together at once. So the time frame, you know, it may take you. It's going to take. Um, they told me it takes two to three months, and it costs about three hundred dollars when you're all said and done to do it. And um, <clears throat> I actually got lucky just in the first step. So um, the first thing you do is is you need to um, do a title search. And there's this kind of like, um, there's a gray area when you're doing a title search. Um, because you shouldn't be allowed to just... Uh, you know, pull a VIN off any vehicle and pay $15 and then get the person's information back. So on that form, I don't have it here, but um, there's, there's different reasons why you can request that information. And one is like if you're an employer, another one is if you're like a towing company, another is if you're involved in a court case. No, on uh, no... None of the check marks does it say I'm doing the process of uh, doing a title search so I can um, do the improper evidence of ownership procedure. 
but they do give you a space to just to write that. So basically, that's what I did. I just said um, I bought a boat, uh, and now the seller says they can't find the title. So I'm going through the process of buying or of um, uh, doing it's it's actually it's called an application for an emergency title so um, is what you were you're doing at the end of everything um, but so on that form where I did the title search I just wrote down um, I, I have the ownership I have possession of the boat you know it's on my property but I don't have the title and I, I just put option one which uh, I think was having to do with um, if you believe the vehicle is stolen. So, and actually on the first one, I just put in parentheses, stolen, question mark. Because, you know, it's something like if you have a vehicle, if, <clears throat> if it's on your property, you can go through the process. It's in your possession, but you want to know if it's stolen or not. So that's why you, there's this kind of gray area where they allow you to get the information for the last um, previous registered person. Um, and that's $15, and it took about uh, two to three weeks to um, get the form back. So this is what I got back uh, for the boat. They just basically, I got two, yeah, two pages. I get this one thing, certified registration. Um, correspondence, uh, they, they ran the VIN that I just pulled off the, the boat, and, um, I think this is actually called, like, a lean search, but anyway, they, so they came out with these two printouts, and one has, um, um, <clears throat> like, title issue date was 2009, um, it's 20, 2017 now, but this was the important part. It comes up with the person's name who registered it, right? So this lady uh, lives up in Oceanport, which is not too far away from me. So I just went on to like whitepages.com and I typed in her name in Oceanport with the address, and it ca she it came under like her name here is uh, Patricia, but it came under as Trish on on the white pages. And it was under a different last name, but the middle initial was F, which matches her last name. And so I just sort of put two and two together. I'm like, all right, it's got to be her. Maybe she got married. So um, I got the phone number. I made a telephone call this very nicely. Hi, um, I'm just, uh, my name is Gio, and I live down in Point Pleasant, and I bought this boat from my neighbor and he never registered it, and um, I did a title search, and it's coming back in your name. And I'm in the process of doing the um, the uh, uh, the title uh, certification, um, the lost title process. But it could save me a lot of time if uh, you'd be you'd be available to just meet me at the um, Department of Motor Vehicles, and uh, I'd be happy to pay you a hundred dollars for your time, um, and you basically can get a new title generated and just sign it over to me. So about a week went by, um, and I didn't hear anything. So I actually went through the process um, of number two which uh, is Original Certified Affidavit of Newspaper Publication. So that's, that's basically, um, those, are, those are like the two main steps. Getting the title search to show that the, that the thing was registered in New Jersey for the state that I'm in, that was the latch registration. And because if it's not, if it doesn't come back as registered in New Jersey, then you actually have to do a title search in the like seven surrounding states. It's like totally insane. It's like... Delaware, Maryland, or Delaware, Pennsylvania, New York, Connecticut, um, and they all have their own processes, and some of them, like Pennsylvania, I looked up, to do a title search there, it's like 60 bucks, you know, and some of them want notarized statements and all this stuff, it's a total headache, if, 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 so I guess the first step, if you're thinking about buying something that's, um, 
has no title, what you could do is say, all right, um, just give me like two or three weeks and I'll come back and let you know if I want to buy it. And what you can do is get the VIN and run the title search. And if it comes back as being registered in New Jersey, then you're good. Then you can actually go through the process. If there's no record in New Jersey, then you're going to have a much, much longer process because you would literally have to do a title search in all of the surrounding states before you even get to step two, which would be the newspaper. So actually, that's that actually happened with the trailer, but I've got a, a happy ending on that one. So in the in the time that I was waiting for her call back, I just called twice. Again, be very, very uh, polite. Um, I just left a message, who you are, I have this boat, uh, I'd be happy to pay you some, some money for your time. Um, it, it probably wouldn't take long. I have this, the certificate, everything, whatever. So um, what I did was I actually uh, went through the process of putting the ad in the paper. And it's hilarious because there's some stuff that pops up um, <clears throat> when you do like a search of how to put an, it's called a, a legal, um, a legal ad. It's not a classified ad, it's a legal ad. And there's actually like legislation going through the New Jersey um, Congress right now to stop this absurdity of people posting uh, title searches in the local newspapers because no one reads them anymore. No one reads the newspapers, but it's a huge money maker for the, for the newspapers. Um, but it actually really wasn't too much. So you have to have a newspaper that's in circulation in your, um, in the county in which you live. So for that, uh, I just went with the Ocean Star, um, and, oh wow, here's the actual, that's amazing, they gave me the actual, um, <laughs> that's the actual ad. <laughs> they just cut it out of the paper. That's amazing. So I, I just called. I just called the newspaper. I said, "Hey, listen, I'm I, I'm doing the title, title, um, lost title process. I need to run an ad." Um, and they said, "Oh, let me get you over to Sharon. She knows exactly about about this, right?" So she calls me back. She says, "Yeah, th I do this all the time. Um, it's going to cost you twenty three dollars and eighty one cents." Um, and they ran the ad three three different days within two weeks. I think that was what what was needed. And then they give you this affidavit. So here's the affidavit. And she said, I know exactly what you're gonna need. So that's really the main thing. It's like you want to get someone who knows what what the process is. So that that was already done. That's pretty cool. So that that ad ran. Um and then the other thing that you have to do is send a certified mail to the address that came up in the title search. So that's why they allow you to get the information for the person, right? It's not because you're trying to stalk them or you want to know the vehicle history or whatever the reason is. It's because you need to send them certified mail. So the certified mail... Um, uh, they have to sign for it, and that means that they received it. And it's actually hilarious because <laughs> the lady called me back on a Monday night. She said, hi, I just got a message. I was away on vacation. Um, I'd be happy to help you out with your boat. That was a really fun boat. It was actually my son's, but it was in my name. And I said, oh, well, tomorrow you're going to get a registered. You're going to have to sign for a letter um, saying that I'm, you know, and I, I printed out along with the form that it says like I am notifying you that I am registering this boat that was uh, registered previously registered in your name I included a, a photo of it what it looked like now which is like a disaster it's been out sitting outside forever and I just a handwritten note I said hi you know exactly what I said on the telephone if you want to meet me at the DMV I'd be happy to pay you hundred dollars you know so that's another thing that would go in your packet. And so the thing was is that basically at this point, I had the newspaper ad, I had the certified mail that she had signed for. If they don't sign for it, like say they don't live there anymore, so they can't sign for it, or they're dead or whatever, um, you have to, something like you have to send, you have to, um, the mail would come back to you 
and then you'd have to enclose that stamped and it showed that it was never opened. So there's like a, there's like crazy, there's like a lot of like, you really got to sort of, sort of read through this packet that if you call the DMV, they will, um, they will go through it with you. Well, they'll, they'll send it to you. And if you just sit here and just sort of like read each page, sort of get like an idea of like what the steps were. Um, but I basically had everything. The next step would have been like, um, getting a notarized statement from three uninterested people, disinterested people, that they see the boat in your possession. So actually it was just about, I, I had like typed up um, an affidavit and I was gonna have like some of our friends that live here in the neighborhood or, or even my neighbor just sort of um, just uh, go with me to the bank. Hey, listen, you know, let me, but most of my, most of our, our friends around here are like, yo, when are you getting the boat ready? Are we going out yet? I'd be like, yo, step up and come with me to the bank and sign this notarized statement that you've seen the boat in my possession. And at that point, we're pretty close to actually have just been submitting it. And then, and then the DMV would just send me a, a title back. So did I have to meet the lady at the DMV? I mean, it just like, it just saved me like a lot of steps, you know, and then the uncertainty. If, she was cool and she was willing to do it and I talked to her on the phone and she was like, I live literally four minutes from the DMV up in Eatontown, like, I'd be happy to come and, and help you out. Um, uh, and she was great and she, it literally took us half an hour, but let me tell you what the process was at the DMV, right? So, um, here's my certified, yeah, all right. So basically, like, I went to the DMV with, with this stuff, right? And I said, and we both walked up to the counter together, and I said, um, hi, I'm here with my friend. I said, excuse me for just pretending that we're friends, but it's just going to be easier. I said, I'm here with my friend. She, ha she lost the title for her boat, but she wants to sell it to me. Um, I did the title search, and this is the certified uh, registration. And the lady behind the desk was like, this isn't good. This is a lien search. I'm like, well, according to your, to the website, um, it says that you can go in to any full service DMV. And there's only three of them in New Jersey. Eatontown luckily was one of them where if you lost a, uh, if you lost the title to a car, you can go in, show ID if it was originally in your name and what they did um, was they gave us this, which is a registration abstract. So we had to go to a different side of the, of the DMV, and she just basically showed her, um, showed her ID, and they pulled up her entire registration record. It was crazy. You could see every car that had ever been registered to her in New Jersey, or anything, yeah, even the boat. So she, she's like, I gotta, I don't want to give you this, but, um, so then we took this registration abstract, which cost 15 bucks on the other side, and then brought it back to the title center. And they gave that to them, and then they printed out a new title for her. And, I mean, that's, that's the thing, is that, like, it's illegal to buy any vehicle without a title, according to the DMV. It's illegal. And the reason for that is because they don't want the court systems clogged up with these situations where someone buys something, but then the person who still has the title in their name can literally walk into any full service DMV and say, hey, I don't have the title for this car. Can you, can you reprint one for me? And then they have the title. And in court, they could say, that's my property on, you know, that's my possession on your property. And they can just take it back. So, um, you know, you have to, like, let's say that boat was really worth something and wasn't just a junky dinghy with an outboard on it, then you, well, I could be in a court case with her, you know, that, um, you know, this notarized statement from my neighbor saying that he bought the boat but never registered it um, isn't really going to hold up, you know, if he never transferred the ownership to himself, you know? He bought it at a tax sale with cash. You know, how's that going to, so you really got to be careful and, um, you know, it, I guess if, 
it may not be beneficial to say, hey, can you come meet me at the DMV? Because if that person's wise, they'll say, hey, well, I can just go to the DMV myself, you know, and, um, and pull, pull the, the title, you know. So any time that you are, um, you know, um, buying something that has no title or thinking about it, if you run that title search first, then you have an idea who you're dealing with as the prior owner, you know. Because if they're a jerk, they're gonna, you know, you're gonna end up buying the thing twice. You're gonna buy it from the previous owner too. All right, so we we took that, um, brought it over, and then they were able to issue a title right there. We both stood there. She gave a title, and then um, I said, "Can you just?" And then she just signed it over, and then I gave the title. I actually didn't even have to leave the desk. Um, I just talked to the agent. She said, all right, so I'm going to make it this title in your name now and register it. And that's exactly what we did. So now I've got the boat registration. I got the title in my name. Um, and they gave us the stickers for the side of the boat. So, so I mean, that was an expensive trip. You know, that cost me, um, let's see here. 106 bucks. I had to pay like sales tax. Another $60 for the. I paid $60 for her to get her title reissued, plus the 15 over there, plus the original 15 for the original title search. And at that point, I already paid $25 for the. Uh, for the ad in the paper. <laughs> but that's done. Now the boat's in my name. Never gonna have a problem with it. Hope it runs, right? <laughs> Hope it floats. So, um, yeah, I'm lucky that I didn't have to go through the full, all the steps, because I was able to get in touch with that prior owner, and she was cool. You know, she was, she was fine. So that's that. Um, now, let me talk about the trailer, because that's the thing. You buy a boat, it's on a trailer and you're gonna need a plate for that trailer. And, you know, we bought a house, we got a house now. We got some savings, we got IRAs. When you start, you start building some assets, you know, you kind, of, you kind of get afraid that, you know, you wanna be legal, you know? Because it's just, just your luck, the, you know, the trailer's gonna end up in someone's friggin' yard or take out a friggin' kid or something, and, and then, you know, they're going to be wondering, well, what is this trailer even registered? And then you got a whole nother can of worms open that, you know, um, people are going to be coming after you about. So in the end, you know, you want to try to be legal, right? So trailers are kind of an interesting thing. Um, but New Jersey is just like equally as they consider it a vehicle. So you literally would have to go through the a whole the exact same process for an emergency title for the trailer, and the trailer new is six hundred bucks. So, I mean, it's almost like worth just buying a new trailer, you know, and and maybe you can unload a trailer with no title to someone who's just willing to take that risk because they don't. Who knows. All right, so here we are back again. I did the, the lean search again, right? Here it comes back, right? Now, but this one on the second page, nothing, nada, no record, right? So that was like, I was like, oh, great. You know, here we go. This, it's, to be fair, it's my neighbor's brother. So, you know, and he, I don't know, going through a divorce and all this other stuff. I don't want to hear the the whining, but, I mean, how could you buy a boat? You got all the paperwork. How could you, not only, you know, and you have the boat for five years, never never put it in your name, and then you actually go through the trouble of buying a brand new trailer for that boat and never register the trailer. You just, just because you have a trailer plate lying around, you just slap it on there and that's, you know, and that's how you're, you're going, you know? I don't understand how you could even buy. I think because normally now, they will register the trailer right at the um, 
at the trailer shop. Who cares? It's all good now. It's all taken care of. All right. So. So all right. So that that was. We did the title search for the trailer. Came back with no record. Right. So at that point, I'm like, all right. There is no way I'm gonna do a title search in six states surrounding New Jersey for a $600 trailer. I'm not going to spend $300 just to get the title, you know, and then I'm going to end up spending $400 just in paperwork just for this rinky dink trailer. No, I'll, you know, there's got to be a better way. There's the whole made route. You know, you can tr say like, oh, it's homemade. The, the hook with that though, is you actually have to take the trailer to a way station and get them to weigh it. <laughs> That would mean I have to take the boat off the trailer, <laughs> which probably I could do, but I'm just like, that's a big, that's a big ordeal. You know what I mean? I got to what? I put it on blocks, drag the trailer out from underneath the boat, and then, you know, pretend that it's homemade somehow, right? Like go get some fake receipts. So I'm looking online, I'm looking at, you know, there's like receiptmaker.com, you know, you can write up some fake receipts and stuff. I'm like, it's so obvious it's not a homemade trailer. Like, that's the last thing I need when I get to the DMV is they're like, they're looking at the pictures. They're like, this is a load right trailer. And that's the thing is that even if you said, oh, well, you know, it's pieced together from like a wrecked trailer and that's why it has this VIN because in the end you want the reg, the registration card for the trailer to have the same VIN that's on it. You know, on eBay there's like plaques that you can get that you can have you know, your own serial number and like gross vehicle weight and all that stuff, all the details for the trailer etched in. They're only like 20 bucks and stuff, you know, for a homemade trailer. I was thinking about that, you know, I'm really going through that whole thing. That's probably the route I would have gone. But then I'm looking up um, a certificate of origin. So if you went to like Harbor Freight, right, and you bought their, like, $200 folding trailer or whatever it is, right? That comes with a certificate of origin that you can take to the DMV and, and register it, right? And it basically just, it just looks like this. Well, this one's, I'll explain what this is, but it looks like this, right? They give you this. And you can take this and get it registered and you get a trailer plate. You know, and that was the other thing I was thinking. Well, maybe we'll just buy a, a cheap trailer and register it and then I'll have a trailer plate and just slap it on there and then, you know, or, you know, try to go that way. Um, the other thing too is like my neighbors, he dropped off this old registration card for the trailer plate that he had, which is for a 1996 trailer, right? So this is the trailer that he had, but then I would, so this would be fine, except it's in his name. So I'd have to pay him or tell him to, you know, coordinate. Here's the guy who was like, can't be found, can't respond to a phone call. How am I going to actually get him to show up at the DMV, take this, and get a new, a new registration reissued, and then sign it over to me? There was that option, too. This was just sort of like a side thing. Forget about that. But, so I'm looking about MCOs, right? You can go on eBay, and you can go on Google, and you can find... Um, blank MCOs, Certificate of Origins. And basically, I guess this is sort of like, you know, if you, let's say you were like building a, uh, I don't know, some sort of a street bike or something, or you have an ATV or something, no one ever registered it, the MCO is lost, or it never came with one, you need to register it, you can get a blank MCO. And then there's like, so I went on, you know, and they were like, 60 bucks on on Google there's different people selling the blank ones and they'd sort of they'd give you a, a template in Microsoft Word that you could sort of you'd put the MCO through the printer and it would print out like the information and that would be like if you're a man you would be technically the manufacturer but then I found like this guy on eBay and he was just sort of uh, he said that like I can fill it in for you so I said all right you know I gave him the story it's a duplicate I did the title search, never been registered, you lost the MCO, I need a duplicate um, MCO. All right, so the guy said, no problem. He's like, just take a picture of the VIN, let me know what it is. He pulled up all the information from the VIN, all the specs on the trailer, and where 
the originating dealer was from, which is pretty amazing, right? So I get this in the mail, right? Cost me 20 bucks. Like, I... My uncle bought a trailer, and I was like, can you just send me a picture of what your MCO looks like, just so I know what the hell I'm looking at? And, you know, I guess in the worst case scenario, like, this could work. You know, you go to the DMV, they know you're registering. It's, this, this is a 280-pound trailer with one axle. I mean, like, you know, give me a break, right? Uh, you know, th this is a, it's a real MCO. It's not a fake MCO. It's just all it is is duplicate. They put the duplicate information in. I mean, technically, yeah, is that fraudulent? I don't know. You know, at this point, it's like people were trying to work around these insane um, situations where a 200-pound trailer that is $600 retail is considered a vehicle and needs to have a full title search. So, you know what? It's like, what, what can you do? You know, I don't blame people for doing these workarounds, especially, like, if you had a moped or a dirt bike or something that, like, you know, never was registered. There's no registration record anywhere of it. You know that. If you could get an MCO like this, maybe you'd find DMV would take it. But but the key thing is, I'm looking at this, and I find Great White Marine, right? And they're up, it says South Amboy, right? So I go on Google, type them up. I'm like, let me just give these people a call, right? Because I was thinking maybe I would go up there and just say, is this does this look legit to you? Like, can you stamp it for me? Like, what else do I, what is missing on this? that when I go to the DMV, they're going to be like, where the hell did you get this from? You know, and then there's always the fucking, <laughs> there's always the the cop in the corner ready to, like, put you in cuffs for, like, you know, who, I don't know, who knows, right? But the last thing, again, you know, you start building assets, the last thing you want to do is have, be in a, a situation like that with law, right? So I call, but this was really interesting. So maybe it was worth the 20 bucks just to get the information to the original distributor. I mean, maybe I can pull that up on Google myself, but I didn't know that. I mean, he pulled all this with just the VIN and he's just some dude down in, in Florida. So I called up Great White Marine, right? The guy goes, he goes, yeah, I get this a lot. Um, he's like, what I can do is I can, I can write up a duplicate. He's like, how old is the trailer? Yeah, it's only like two years old. Okay, fine. All right, let me, I'm going down to load right this Friday. Let me, let me talk to them. They probably can, um, they can reprint the C, uh, MCO, Street of Origin. So that's what he's got right here. He's, um, he's got the new address. He's got all the stamps on the back. And I took this to the DMV, and he actually wrote up a bill of sale. You know, he's like, I got to write up a bill of sale because I got, you know, you need, you have to pay the sales tax. It's going to be as if you came to the dealer and you bought it. That, that guy who bought it from me, that never actually happened because he never registered it. So here you are, <clears throat> you're going to get this, um, this duplicate. Here's the bill of sale that you need to pay the sales tax on. And he charged me a hundred dollars to do this. So, um, you know, this was like as close to legal as I can get, basically. And and it is. I mean I don't see I don't see the difference. If it was never registered, the guy never took ownership of it, you know. If he doesn't have the MCO, he doesn't have the MCO. I have the MCO now. I and it says it actually says duplicate up on top. So when I went to the DMV today, you know, I said, um Yeah, I um you know, the dealership printed out a duplicate MCO for me. Here's the bill of sale. Uh, it was a leftover trailer. It was never registered. So, you know, the agent, she like looks at this. She looks at it. She's like, hold on a second. Goes in the back. She's talking to her supervisor back and forth. And basically what I got from this, you know, bits and pieces of the conversation, the supervisor was basically like, it's a trailer. They never registered it. She, she understands what, what the system is too. She's like, She's like, yeah, the paperwork is valid. You know, she's like, just go, go with it. So I've got my trailer, got my real reg with my real VIN that's on the trailer, all the specs, and that cost me another 60 bucks. <laughs> so when you're, you know, when you're at the end of all this, you know, um, you got to think $500. I've really spent like 500 bucks with all this together between 
between registering it and, and all that other stuff. And and before I went to the DMV tonight, I also have got my new progressive policy. Because if you're registering the trailer, it's got to be insured. <laughs> So I had to pull that. Now and now everything is insured. Whatever boat red, boat insurance is just a hundred bucks. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got my got my boat ramp. Borough of Point Pleasant. <laughs> got to you know go there on when you got a day. You can go in a weekday in the middle of the day, ten o'clock in the morning. Got my key for the lock. So, it's a long process. Um, like I said, I think if I were to go back, I would have fucking lowballed the hell out of my neighbor. No offense, but um, bottom line is, if you are so irresponsible that you can't take the time to get your possessions in your name, you don't deserve the value of what they are. Um, that you only deserve like half the value of what, of what they potentially are. Because the, I mean, just the paperwork, you know, it's like, um, you know, especially for, for someone who wants to like abide by the law and make sure that, that all the, um, you know, I'm, when I'm driving that trailer down to the docks or whatever, I've got all the valid registrations and there's just no question because, I mean, they stop people out on the water all the time here. And it doesn't matter if you know, if you've got a buddy and he works for the Coast Guard and this, that, and the other thing, or you're a cop. It does not matter. Like, their job is to uphold the law, you know? And they know, just like every spring, whenever, when every motorcycle hits the road, they're running those tags all the time because they know that just people, they just don't want to be bothered with something that they don't use every day. And, um, you know, maybe you get by just fine, but down the line, when it comes time to sell that item or you're passing it down to someone or whatever the situation is, even if you want to just scrap it, you're going to have a tough time if you can't prove ownership. So this was my experience. Um, uh, it's a, it's a lot of, just, it's a big process and you just really got to take it step by step. And, um, you know, if you have a question, it's tough because you got to call the DMV in the middle of the day, you know, and that's sometimes a 20 minute wait on the telephone. So I'm lucky that I work as a mechanic and sometimes I've got a big job and I'm just stuck on a car for a few hours and I was able to just put, put in my earbuds, make the telephone call and just listen to the, um, the waiting music, and then when they picked up, I was able to just put my tools down and, and ask some questions, but yeah, big, big process, so I'm glad that's all done, um, thanks for watching, and uh, I wish you luck with your, you know, get getting your documents in order and staying legal, and um, it just helps you enjoy the, the stuff that much more, so... All right, have a good time.